Hey everyone, Gary Simon of Corsetro here. And today we have a good one for you. I've been working on this quite a while and this is going to be a crash course for Vue.js 2. And you're going to learn pretty much all of the core concepts. And so this is definitely very much a beginner's course. We're not going to get in depth into any one specific area, uh, but we're gonna cover all the pertinent topics and also do so in an example format because we're going to create an app in doing so. All right, so let me just show you that app real quickly. And this is the app, obviously very simple, uh, kind of just like a, a your, your typical kind of a to-do type of list app, but it, it, it has a different unique. It says enter a skill that you have, whatever. All right, so first, I without using it so far, we can see that I, you know, we're gonna be handling basic templating and covering interpolation and stuff like that. Also iterating over arrays, kind of like how we are. We're also gonna cover CSS, and more specifically class and style binding here in view. Um, and then also we're gonna handle form input. So if we put in something like DESI, for instance, we'll see that this little um, form validation comes up. So we're gonna be covering form submission in validation as well. Um, if I just put D easy, <laughs> I put DIS in design fully, we'll see that goes away. We can now hit enter and it will submit it. We have animation occurring. Uh, we have enter and leave animation. So if I get rid of this, we can see we have a unique animation occurring. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to tie that in with other animation libraries. Um, also, we're gonna cover routing. So yeah, we can go to different pages and I have a, a URL parameter here that we're showing in a template. So I'm gonna show you how to do all of this basic stuff. And yes, while it is very simple, you're really going to gain a lot, especially in a very short, relatively speaking, amount of time. All right, so in this tutorial right here, in this lesson, we're gonna talk about the obvious, how to install Vue.js. And so we're gonna cover three different ways. So the first way is going to be using a CDN, which is very quick and easy to get up, uh, up and running with. The second way will be to use NPM to install it with an existing project that you might have. And then the third and final way that we're gonna use for our project project is using the view CLI or command line interface. So let's go ahead and get started. Oh, but real quick, before we begin, make sure you check out my site, Corsetro.com, where you're going to find a bunch of courses on modern design and development. A lot are free and the others you can access for the cost of buying me like a six pack each month. That's it. Now, also, it probably wouldn't hurt to subscribe here on YouTube and be sure to make sure the notifications are turned on. All right, let's get back to it. So the first thing, oh, by the way, I just wanted to mention every uh, video lesson here also has a full written version. So you can find that here in the description and then you can just, you know, if you need to grab code or whatever, you can do that there as well. All right, so the first method that we're going to use here uh, is just basically using a CDN version. So open up your command line or console and I'm going to create a new folder for this. So make dir view CDN, and then we're also going to put double ampersands to CD view and then CDN. So I'm just gonna create it and then hop into it. All right, so now I'm just going to type in code in a period and that will open up Visual Studio Code. That's the code editor I use. You can download that and install it for free if you wish, it's from Microsoft and then you would have access to that uh, console command. So now we're just gonna create an index.html file. By the way, you don't have to follow this uh, if you're not gonna use this method. If you're just interested in jumping in with the method we're gonna use, you can fast forward to this video where I start to cover the, the view CLI. All right, um, but for now, um, this boilerplate code that I have that I'm about to use, you could just hit uh, exclamation point and enter. Um, and also, in the written version, I do have a link here for the script that we're going to use. So if you want to use the CDN version, all we have to do is just paste this right here. Hit control B to get rid of that sidebar. I, and we can see we have script source and this is how we're including Vue.js right here. And that's from a CDN or a content delivery network. It's basically one of the fastest ways of getting up and running with a project with Vue.js. So I, if we save this now and I hit control B to get the sidebar, right click and reveal an explorer real quickly. And I double click on this. Let me get this out over here. 
and I hit Control Shift I here on Chrome, we'll see in the console, it says download Vue DevTools extension for a better development experience. You are running Vue in development mode. So yes, we have Vue up and running and ready to go already. All right, so uh, just to demonstrate how I, and the fact that this actually is a Vue app, uh, we can go back to the console. All right, Control B here. And what we can do is just underneath our script right here, we can have another script. And inside of this, we can actually construct our view app. And one quick way of uh, doing this, let me just, uh, because we're not gonna be using this method, I just want, I'm just going to copy and paste from the written version. All right, and so you'll understand what this stuff means in a little bit, but I'm just gonna paste this here. And then also at the top, we're gonna add a div. And right here is interpolation. And by the way, if you don't know what this means, don't worry, I'm gonna be covering that. But we're using interpolation to show a property called message. The message is defined down here, says hello view. So if we save this and we go back and we go to, oops, I have the wrong area up, there we go. We refresh this, says hello view right there. That way we know this is an actual Vue.js 2 app. All right, so that's how you get up and running with an actual CDN. We're not going to do that though. Uh, it's not as dynamic and flexible uh, of a way to, to actually use Vue. So um, the next method to use Vue.js, I'm not even going to cover it. Instead, what I'm going to do is just show the written version of this tutorial. And this is under the section of installing Vue through NPM, all right? so. Basically, you know, you can use it to install Vue within either a new or existing project. All right, so one of the first steps you need, you have to make sure you have Node.js installed uh, along with the NPM. And then we could make a directory just like we did before. And then we would run NPM init Y to create a package JSON file if you don't already have one. And then we would use NPM install Vue and then save it as a dev dependency. By the way, you can also use the yarn package manager if you're used to using that. All right, so then at this point, you would create an index.html file with the same exact contents as the CDN example above, except you would change the script source to node modules, Vue, dist, and then Vue.js uh, because uh, NPM installs it locally, so you wouldn't be using a CDN. All right, so I, we're not doing that method. The way we're gonna get our project up and running up with is the Vue CLI. All right, so that's what we're gonna do now. So the first thing we need to make sure we actually have the Vue CLI up and running. Let me close this out here. Um, so to do that, I'm gonna go back to my console. I'm gonna get out of there. And what you would run is npm install. And by the way, if you ha you want to check to make sure you have your npm by running npm hyphen v. If not, make sure you install Node.js from Node.js.org. All right, so npm install global. That's the hyphen g. And we're going to say at view forward slash cli. Hit enter and that will install. I'm not going to install it because I already have it installed. It'll take maybe about a minute or 30 seconds. All right. Once you have it installed and it's ready to go, if you encounter any of errors, of course, make sure uh, you obviously go and Google it to fix it. And once it's ready, view, create, and then name of the project. We'll just call this view skills. All right, so hit enter. And now it's gonna take, well, usually in, uh, I'm used to other uh, CLIs and installing quickly. Now, first it's going to give you a prompt. Please pick a preset. And you could use your arrow keys to choose whichever. This is just a default version where it will include just some minimal options, or you could choose manually select features. We're not going to manually select the features. Um, that includes stuff like you know the SAS pre-processing, -pro uh, uh, the view router, and there's uh, several other ones. But for now, we're just going to choose default. All right. So at this point, then it's going to take a little bit of time to get up and running. It's usually about 30 seconds or so. Um, and I will come back when that's done. All right, great. So now it's done. We can see here at the very bottom, it tells you go ahead into CD, the project name, and then yarn serve, okay? Because it, it's gonna use yarn. So CD view skills, yarn serve, all right? All right, so now we can go ahead to this local host. 
I already have one running, so that's why it's at 8081 instead of 8080. Yours will probably be 8080. So just go ahead and copy that, and then you can open up uh, a new browser window here. Did I really just copy eight? Localhost 8081. And there we go. And it's all ready and set up. All right, so we're going to continue on by learning about view components in the next section. View components are the basic building blocks of your view app. It's where you have three different things. You have your templating, you have your logic, and you also have your styling. So to show you more specifically what I'm talking about, let's go back to our code editor. Make sure you have our new project opened up in the view skills folder. And this is what you're going to see. All right, so also, most of our time will definitely be spent in this source folder right here. And so the view command line interface or CLI, it generates all these files for us. And we want to look at app.view. Okay, so there's three things happening here. Um, and really, just to demonstrate what's happening, I'm going to get rid, you don't have to do this, just of uh, the, the stuff that was inside of these three uh, elements here. First, we have the template. This is where all of our HTML will reside. And there's also other stuff that goes there, like view directives and also uh, view component wrappers. And we'll get into that. Uh, we also have this script section. And this is where the logic of our app resides. And then also the style section. This is where the CSS is placed down here. All right, so it's obviously structured in a very simple and understandable way for you to use. All right, so let me back up real quickly here. All right, so let's talk about importing other components because if we go back and we look at the actual starter project, we'll see we just have you know one block of HTML for this UI here. Well, if we look real quickly in this uh, section right here, we have this custom HTML element that doesn't exist in normal HTML, but it's called hello world. And we're also seeing this MSG equals and then some value here. Um, what that actually is, is that's an importing another component which resides in this components folder called Hello World. Uh, the way that works is first we reference the name of the component here as a custom element in the template section. And then in the script section, we see we can import Hello World from and then the path to it. All right. And then we can also see uh, under components, we have Hello World that's referenced. Now let's look at hello world.view itself. And by the way, we notice that this is app.view and this is hello world.view. So the dot view extension denotes the fact that we are working with a uh, it's called a single file component. All right. So looking at this hello world.view file here, we could see it looks very similar to the structure of the app.view because we can see we have a template section albeit there's a lot of it here. And then we also have a script section with some logic and then also a style se section. So for our purposes, we're going to be creating uh, this, this app that allows you to specify your skills. So let's go ahead and rename this file first to better accommodate our needs. So rename, we're just gonna call this skills. All right, so let's also here and the script section of the logic se section, rename this to skills, right? And the props, we don't need anything in there. That's short for properties. We'll cover that uh, in a little bit. And then also, let's adjust the entire template section. We're going to get rid of actually everything with exception to the, the first div and the template. And we're just going to, for now, just say skills. We're going to save that. And then we're gonna go back to our app.view and we have to rename this from hello world to skills as well as the name of the file. And then right here, we'll say skills. And then finally up here, remember we have to reference the actual name. So it is skills and we're not gonna be passing along any data. All right, so just like that. So also we don't need this logo. So let's save and now it's gonna look quite different. We simply have skills right there. So that is the basic 
by you know a demonstration of what a component is. And so again, at the most basic level, a component is, consists of three different things. Like I mentioned, our template, our script or our logic of our component and the styles. All right, so in the next lesson, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at templating, more specifically up in this area right here. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at view templating. And in the template section, again, you're able to spe specify HTML, view interpolation, as well as view directives. So let's go ahead and give that a more specific look. So let's open up source, our components, and our skills.view file. All right, so the first thing we're going to cover is interpolation. So the, main, the most basic form of view interpolation is called text interpolation. And it's simply the process of displaying a string that's defined in your component logic somewhere right here. All right, so let's go ahead and define a property and we're gonna call it name. So let's go ahead and get rid of this right here. We're going to put in data and then we're going to open it up in squiggly braces. We're going to return and this is where we can put our properties and you can think of them like variables. So we're gonna say name and we put a colon and then the value, Corsetro. All right, you can put whatever name, of course, that you want here. All right, so now to display this in the template section up here, we have to use what are called interpolation squiggly braces, as I call them. So, or a lot of people call them mustaches. Um, you put two of them and we're going to put in the name of the property. So this is simply name. Very dead simple stuff. If we save this, then we'll see it says Corsetro. Hooray. Okay, so let's also talk about then interpolation in HTML attributes. Uh, for example, if you have like an image source equals, uh, that would be an attribute. This is an attribute here. So one important thing to note is that you can't use these interpolation braces within view within attributes. All right, so to demonstrate how this actually works, let's create a Boolean property and set the disabled attribute of a button based on this property. So let's go ahead and I'm going to put in just underneath here, a button and we're going to say V on and then we'll say click. Now V on and we're going to get in more in depth into what exactly V hyphen all this stuff is. This is basically a directive right here and saying on click. So when somebody clicks this button, then we're going to call a custom method called change name. All right, and we'll define that shortly. And then we're also going to have another view directive called vbind, and we'll say disabled. So this is an attribute that's in normal button HTML. We'll say btn state. So we don't do this. That won't work. We're just going to put in the actual property button state. All right, so then let's give it um, some text here and then close out that button. So then in the logic, what we wanna do is create that Boolean value btn state. So we simply put right there a comma, btn state, and we'll set it to true. In other words, disabled will equal true uh, based on this value right here of true. So it's going to be disabled. So let's go ahead and save this and we'll open this up. Now we can't click it because it is disabled. All right, so that's how interpolation in attributes work. So let's also talk about expressions in interpolation. So right now we're just displaying a single name up here. Um, let's add one where we're going to demonstrate the fact that you can put in JavaScript expressions within these interpolation braces. So for instance, um, we can use a ternary operator, which is like a conditional statement within our BTN state Boolean. So let's go ahead and add this. So interpolation braces, BTN state. All right, we're going to put in a question mark and this is basic JavaScript ternary operator. It's basically in if else. So it's saying if button state is true, then we'll say the button is disabled and then else, 
when we use that with a uh, com or colon rather, the button is active. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. And now we'll see this message that's telling us the button is disabled because it currently is disabled. So you can also utilize other uh, JavaScript um, functions such as math uh, within this interpolation here. So it handles a lot of just basic JavaScript and some things that you can't do, but we're not gonna get all into that. So now let's also talk about view directives. So in view templating, you will find yourself utilizing the various directives that exist just as we did right here. All right, so um, a view directive is a, a very is a, a view specific attribute that's prefixed by a V hyphen as shown right here. All right, so each serve a different purpose. And I just wanna bring over the written version of this tutorial just to show you how many exist. We have, you know, it looks like there's roughly 12 or so right here. So we have vtext, HTML, show if, else, else, if. They'll handle pretty much everything you're going to need, in other words. Um, I'm not gonna go into depth um, into all of these, but let's try giving, for instance, you know, one that you're probably going to use a lot, um, which is v4. And this attribute allows you to iterate through a list, like an array or an array of objects. So first, let's create an array of objects in the component logic. So right here, uh, we're going to get rid of this name and button state stuff right here. We're gonna, going to create uh, an array of objects called skills, all right? So we open up the array brackets and we'll have an object here with a name or a skill property rather, and we'll set it to Vue.js. That might be a person's skill set. Hopefully it'll be yours after this. Um, I'm gonna hit Shift Alt in the down arrow key to replicate that line. And we'll have an, another one, maybe front end developer. Okay, so now we have our array of objects property called skills. All right, so next in the template section, let's go ahead and gut all this stuff right here. All right, we're going to put in a div class. Uh, we're gonna call it holder. And I'll be referencing that stuff in CSS shortly. Um, so now we're gonna have an unordered list. And by the way, we're gonna be keeping this um, HTML throughout the, uh, the course. So this is stuff that you need to do if you're gonna follow along. So we're gonna have a list item. And this is where we're gonna use the v4 uh, directive. So v hyphen four equals and we're going to put in first the uh, some parentheses that will say first the data, and then we're going to put comma and an index to gain access to the actual index. And then we're gonna say in, and then this is going to be the skills uh, array of objects. So also to get access to the key, we put in colon key equals, and we're gonna give the, the key a name of index that we can um, reference if we wish. So now, just to show that we're gonna have access to uh, the index, we can put through interpolation index, we'll put a period, and then we'll put data dot, and notice this is this data, this name right here is coming from the fact that we uh, gave this first uh, parameter and a value of um, data. And then what do we wanna show? We wanna show skill, we wanna show the actual name. So we're gonna put skill right here. All right, so let's go ahead and close that list item. All right, so now let's go ahead and save this. And if you did it correctly, it's now gonna show us right here, Vue.js, and that's uh, the array index of zero and then one of front end developer. All right, very simple stuff. Let's try one more though. Let's put a vif uh, directive along with a vlse for an if else statement in the template. So just underneath our unordered list. And by the way, we're not going to keep this. I just wanted to demonstrate just for a little bit more of muscle memory with um, directives. So we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna have a paragraph of v if equals, we'll say if uh, the skills dot length, and that's gonna copy how many skills right here they have, obviously we know it's two. If it's uh, greater than or equal to one, we'll say you have more than one skills. I hope you do. And then we'll say p v else, 
we'll say you have less than or equal to one skill. All right, so we know what this is going to be. If we save it, we'll see you have more than one skills because there's two. All right, so if you wanted to try to remove that one of these, you, you'll get this obviously. All right, so, and that's basically how uh, view directives and templating as a whole work, obviously on a very fundamental and basic level. Now we're gonna focus on CSS within Vue.js. Now Vue makes it very easy to handle your CSS and you can choose to write your CSS directly within the style portion of your component or you can write it within an external CSS file, um, especially if it's there's a lot of CSS and you wanna try to keep organization. There's also class and style binding that you can use within your template. All right, so we're gonna cover all this right now. And the first thing I wanna talk about is understanding what scoped means in view, all right? So basically this means that any CSS defined here, um, if we have scoped added, then it's only going to apply to the template HTML that's defined in this component here. So to demonstrate you know, how this works, let's open up our app.view. And we can see that this right here, this style does not have scoped. So um, let's go ahead and remove this rule set here. Let's put in body, background color, and we're gonna say six E's. And that's a light gray color. All right, so if I save this and we open up our file, we can say now that we have a light background like that. Um, if we add scoped to this, however, now remember this that HTML is defined in a different file and we save it, we'll see it is now completely white. All right, so that's an important, very simple concept to understand. Uh, but when you're you know, dealing with a larger app, then it's important to understand you know, when and um, where to use scoped. So generally speaking, um, when it comes to global CSS that you want to apply to everything, um, you want to remove scoped, all right? Okay, so now let's talk about linking to an external style sheet or CSS file uh, within view. So at the moment, our CSS rule sets for our two components are confined within the actual component itself. So we have our CSS here in this component, same thing with our app.view. Well, uh, if you have a lot of CSS, it may make, make more sense to separate them into separate CSS files. So to do that, in the skills view file that we have here, we're gonna make the following adjustment. First, we're just gonna get rid of everything in here. And we're going to say source, equals, and then the location of the CSS file. So we'll say in the same directory, we'll have a skills.css file. So now let's save that. Let's create that skills CSS file. And we're just going to put just some basic CSS right here. And then we'll go ahead and save this. So if we look at our project, now we can see that if we go back here, make sure this is saved. There we go. Yeah, I had to refresh that in order for it to work. Uh, we can see now that this CSS is applying so that we know that the external style sheet is working. All right, so we're not going to be using this method. So we're going to remove uh, that source. We're gonna back up here, just get rid of that. And then also get rid of this right here. Okay. So let's also talk about view class binding. So both class and style binding in Vue use the v bind directive. And we know what a directive is already from the previous section. So this directive allows you to dynamically control when and if CSS classes and styles are applied along with the CSS properties and values. So to, let's go ahead and adjust our template in our skills view file. By the way, I'm gonna right click and delete that CSS. All right, so let's go ahead and adjust the template section up here. So first I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this demonstration down here with our two paragraph tags. And what I wanna do is we're going to add a div and we're going to say v bind, that's the v bind view attribute. And what do we want to bind? Well the attribute will be class. So we're covering class binding. 
So vBind class equals, just like it normally would in HTML, just think, you know, if we did this, that would look perfectly fine, but because we want class binding, we're gonna put vBind with a colon. All right, so vBind class equals, now inside of here, we put in just in single squiggly braces, we're gonna put in alert, show alert. All right, so what exactly is happening here? Okay, well, by, by the way, before I get to that, let me just close that div out. Okay, so we're using the vbind at our directive on the class attribute, and then we're saying to insert the alert class right here uh, as a value, only if the Boolean show alert property is true. So let's go ahead and define that real quick. So just after the skills property, we're gonna put in show alert, and we're gonna say true. All right, so then just to demonstrate how this works, we need to add the actual alert class right down here in the style section. So I'm gonna put in alert and then we give it our properties. So we'll say a background color of yellow, a width of 100% and then also a height of 30 pixels just so we can see it. So let's save this. And now we can notice this I uh, yellow you know, rectangle essentially that we created. Now, if you wanna show alert only if show alert is false, then we could use the exclamation point up here. And save it. And there we go. We see it gets removed because uh, this uh, expression didn't evaluate, all right, to true. So that's how you can do very simple class binding in view. So you can use vbind class equals, and we can attach this, um, this class only if it, this certain expression evaluates the true or not. Okay, so we can also handle multiple class binding in view because there's maybe, may, there might be times when you wanna add multiple classes, so how would you do that? All right, well, we can update this part just by putting in a comma after our show alert right there. And then we'll say another class, we're gonna wrap this one in semicolon. So we're gonna say another class that will be the name of the CFS, CSS class that we create. And then we'll put in show class. So of course, we would simply define another uh, show class. Actually, I'll just do it. I wasn't gonna show you because it's so simple, but I'll just do it anyway. Um, we'll put true and we'll say show class. And we'll say, border five pixel solid black. All right, so now if we save this, it should have, oop, let's go ahead and back up right there. There we go. Oh, another class, sorry. I gave it the wrong name. I gave it the name of the, uh, the Boolean. There we go. And it works as expected. All right, so let's also talk about using vbind class right here, this directive of vbind with an object instead of all of this stuff. I mean, cause you can imagine this will get pretty, uh, you know, pretty cluttered if you have a bunch of classes. So there's a better approach to handling that scenario. And so what we'll do is instead, we're gonna take this and then we're just gonna to reference a, uh, a, a property here called alert object. All right, so now we can create alert of object right here. So we'll say alert object, and then we create it in an object with the uh, squiggly braces, and we'll say alert is true. And then you can add more uh, properties down here or Boolean values if you wish. And then we could just say, we'll save it. and we can see it still works. Now let's go ahead and talk about style binding. All right, so you still use the vbind directive, except instead of specifying class equals, it'll be style equals. So let's go ahead and adjust the template for that. So view style equals, let's go ahead and get rid of that. Open it up in squiggly braces. And we're gonna need to say background color and it doesn't usually use the same 
type of property values of CSS in terms of naming. It's using camel case here. And we'll say, we'll bind this to a property called BG color. Uh, we can also specify a width here, a BG width, a height of BG height. Okay, so now in the component logic, what we can do is adjust this so that we have BG color. We'll give it a property, a CSS property value of yellow, uh, a BG width, we'll say 100%, and BG height will be 30 pixels. All right, so now if we go ahead and save, we'll see that we have the same result essentially that we had before. Okay, so now what we'll do is let's continue on by styling our actual project that we're gonna be developing and working on. So um, now obviously if you've been following along, we've been working on this simple project, it's called skills, uh, where people can add their skills. And at this point, it doesn't really have much of a user interface at all. So let's change that by adding some role sets to make it look better and keep on learning. So we wanna adjust the template section up here. Let's go ahead and get rid of this. Uh, to the following. So for now, I'm just gonna put in a paragraph down here. We're going to say, these are the skills that you possess. All right, and then also we don't need the index. We don't need to show that. So we'll just go to put um, data.skill and that's that. Then in our style section, and this is where it would be handy to see the written version of this tutorial. Um, you can just go ahead and just copy all of this because I'm not going to um, sit there typing this out. It's just standard CSS, very basic stuff. Um, I'm just going to paste it right there. So also, um, let's also, oops, let me get this out. Let's also add some CSS based on the um, our app view file. So I'm just gonna take this, copy it, We'll go to our app view file and paste that. So we're just importing a custom font here or a font called Montserrat. Um, we, we have our body tag, HTML, again, all simple stuff. Um, so if we go back to our project, we will now see it actually looks a little bit better. All right, great. Okay, so let's talk about handling user submitted data within view, and that means dealing with forms and also form validation. All right, so let's go ahead real quickly, and the first thing we'll talk about is the view v model directive. So when you need to capture user input, you can use the v model directive on form inputs in text areas, which enables what's called two-way data binding. And that basically means you can communicate from the template to the logic, and also, from the logic to the template. All right, so uh, to demonstrate this, let's go ahead in our skills uh, Vue.js file that we've been working on, and we're going to add real quickly a text input. So input type equals text, placeholder, enter a skill you have, and then we're going to use that vModel directive, and we'll say equals skill. All right. So this right here is a property that we need to define a Boolean more specifically um, right down here. So what we'll do first is get rid of these three properties. We don't need them anymore. We'll add skill and, oh, by the way, I thought it was gonna be a Boolean, it's not, it's just an empty string. Um, and then also while we're in this file, let's real quickly um, put in a rule set just to style up that input that we just added. All right, you can get this from the written version right here, it's just basic uh, CSS. And also just underneath this, I forgot, let's put through interpolation skill so we can show the process of um, capturing user input. So we're gonna display what the user is typing essentially. So enter a skill you have, here's the input. So I'll just put in coding and there you go. So this is demonstrating uh, the fact that, you know, we're sending the user input to the actual, uh, the component logic section, section, and then also displaying it here in the template. All right, very simple. So let's also talk about form submission in view. So let's uh, go ahead, and right now we obviously don't have an actual form, so let's wrap this in a form. So form, and then we're going to say, in order to capture that user input, we're going to say at submit, and then we're gonna put a period 
prevent to prevent the page from reloading. And we're going to call, once it's submitted, uh, a method called add skill. All right, so we're going to create that just in a second. All right, so now this is the first time you've been experienced or you're, uh, you're going to experience how to define actual methods in the component logic. We we'll simply put in here methods. All right, so what's the method? Add skill. And then you just write out normal JavaScript like any other time. So we'll say um, once add skill is called, we'll say this.skills.push. And we're going to add a new skill with the name of skill to this dot skill. And that's all that it takes. Let's also clear out the text area. And remember, the value of the text area is bound to skill. So we'll set this dot skill equals nothing. Very simple. So now, if we go ahead and save this and look at it, uh, let's say coder. Yeah. So it works very easily, as you can see. So obviously, um, let's talk about handling multiple user inputs uh, because, like I mentioned, obviously, uh, unless you're building a chat app or something really simple like this, you're probably going to have multiple form fields. So let's go ahead and just temporarily, we're not going to leave this here, but I just want to demonstrate it. Let's add a checkbox. So type equals checkbox, ID equals checkbox, and V model is checked. All right, so we're using V model, and we have to now define something called checked. This will be a Boolean value. So we'll go ahead and put in at the top checked, and we'll say false. All right, then let's modify our add skill to demonstrate just uh, real quickly through a console log that we have access to um, that checkbox value. So this checkbox value is, and we'll put in this.checked. All right, so now if we save this, refresh here, um, we'll go ahead and say Control Shift I to get out that console. We'll say coding, and let's not check it. So it'll say false. All right, coding again. Let's check it this time. And it's true. Very, very simple. So we're not going to use that though. Um, so let's go ahead and just uh, back up just a few times here. So let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. And then finally also let's get rid of this section right here. So now let's talk about view form validation. So there's several view form validation packages that you can install via NPM or Yarn. And a popular one is called vValidate. And you could find the information about this plugin here. I'm not going to cover everything about it. You could probably have an, I don't know, a very large tutorial just on, on, on what it offers. But I'm going to cover just the, you know, how to use it in a very basic sense, especially in the context of our app. All right. So first, in order to have access to it, we're going to install it. Uh, so you can either go to the console here or you can go to view integrated terminal, which is right there. And we can say yarn add and then v hyphen validate. So let's do that real quickly. And then next, in order for it to work, and I'm just going to you know get this out. Yeah, we can close that right now. It's done already. Um, we can hit control B. We have to, in order to be able to use it, we have to go to our main JS file. And then we're going to import at the top. And it's going to be v validate from v validate. And then also, in order to use it, we say right here, view.use v validate. Very simple. OK, so let's go ahead and save that. And now we can actually use this validation plugin. So to validate our input field right here, we're going to add to it right here at the end. We'll say v, one second. We're going to say v validate equals, and then we're going to put a double quote and then single quote. We'll say minimum or min. We'll say five characters. So the skill that they enter has to have at least five characters. 
All right, and then also we'll say name equals skill. It needs to have a name uh, in order for this to work properly. All right, so um, let's also show an error message if the validation is not um, acceptable. So we'll go ahead and put a P class of alert and we'll say V if, which is another view directive, we will show it only if the errors and this is a object that's produced from v validate itself. We don't have to create it ourselves. If the errors has one for skill, then we're going to show this interpolation errors dot first and then skill. That's the name of the error that's going to show for this particular input. All right. So now we save this. And we uh, go ahead and put in just some initial type. Oop. The skill field must be at least five characters, but if we get to five, it goes away. Let's style that real quickly um, to make it a little bit better looking. So um, again, I'm gonna copy this off screen, paste this down here. Again, the class is alert, just some basic CSS, save it, try that again. There we go. So the skill field must be at least five characters and then we get beyond it. There we go. Now, one of the problems here is the fact that um, even if we put in two characters, hit enter, it still submits it. So you obviously don't want that. So to fix that, let's go back to our add skill section here in our methods and we're gonna wrap everything um, right after add skill is opened here and this dot validator dot validate all then we'll say result okay so inside of here we'll say if there's a result that means that all of the validation is successful again you can find this information by the way at that v validate uh, github url in the documentation um, and then we'll say else console log, or you could show uh, something in the, in the template if you wish. We're just gonna say not valid. All right, so we take this, copy it, and put that in the area where it is successful uh, in terms of the validation. All right, so now if we try this, we'll get up our console here, and we start typing and try to hit enter, it won't let it. So it won't allow, it, won't allow it and it says not valid. So now, we can do it. All right, awesome stuff. View2 offers you the ability to add animations within your user interface. And this includes uh, common elements such as enter and leave animations and also state transitions. So we're gonna take a look at this and also apply some animations to the project that we've been working on. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is talk about probably you know what the biggest use case for animations are, which is enter and leave animations. All right, so if these animations, you know, if done correctly, they do add a nice touch to the UI instead of simply just instantly showing elements. So to demonstrate this in our skills view file, we're gonna modify the template. And the part that we're gonna focus on is the, uh, the, the error portion right here for our form validation that we worked on in, in the previous section. So we're going to wrap this around or wrap um, a custom component wrapper as it's called in view called transition all right so transition and we're going to give it a name and we'll say alert in now let's go ahead and close transition here all right so basically the important thing to note here i uh, is we give it a name and this is alert in all right and this is going to serve as the prefix for some CSS animation classes that we define you know, very shortly. And so this transition wrapper here that we have, it's going to apply animations in the following cases based on what's being wrapped within it. And so that could be a um, something with a VIF directive, conditional rendering, uh, VSHOW, that's something we haven't covered, but it's also a directive dynamic components and also component root nodes as they're called. So in our case, this P class right here, uh, this is using a V if directive 
and therefore it will work. So in order to make this error message animate, we have to create a CSS class for it in the style section. So remember, alert in is the name we gave it. So let's come down here to the bottom and we're going to say a class, so a period, alert in, and then after we're going to say enter hyphen active. And so we'll give it a CSS animation property with a value of bounce hyphen in 0.5 seconds. And then also let's copy this and simply modify alert in, uh, this is going to be leave active. So when it leaves, we'll say the same thing, except we're just going to reverse it right here. And then we're going to put in some keyframe animations. I'm not going to cop, uh, type this all out. Instead, I'm just going to copy and paste it from the written version. And so we're referencing the bounce in animation name we referenced here and here. And this is just a keyframe animation of 0%. We're going to transform it. We're going to make it zero in terms of scale. So it's going to be nothing. At 50% of this five second duration, it's going to be um, 1.5 the original times the original size and then back down to one at 100%. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and save this and we'll go ahead and look real quickly. So now if we start typing, just watch the animation taking place. And there you go. It may not ap appear very smooth in a video because of the frame rate, but it does appear real smooth uh, if you actually use it. And by the way, notice when we get rid of the value and when it leaves, it also animates too. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now the transition classes that you have at your disposal uh, outside of just enter active and leave active are also enter, enter to, leave and leave to outside of enter active and leave active. You can always, um, you know, do your research if you need to, to learn more about those for your use cases. But this is a crash course, so I'm just covering the basic stuff. All right, so let's also talk about using an anima animation library instead of having to define your own animations, um, which you may find tiresome <laughs> or bad at. So in this case, we can use a third-party animation library such as animate.css, and this is a popular one right here. Uh, you can um, just experiment with what these are and it will adjust the logo here based on what you want. So in order to access that, Let's go ahead real quickly. We're gonna modify our template up here. And right where it says our transition name equals alert, let's add enter hyphen active hyphen class equals, and then the class is associated with our third party animation library. So animated flip in X, that's one of the options uh, from that animate animation library. And then also, leave active class and we'll say that is equal to animated again and flip out at x there all right so now in order for this work we have to actually import or have access to that animation library and in this case we can just very simply in the style section add it as an import right here all right, so we'll save this. And now type it and there it goes. It kind of does this little flipping and it overrides anything that you have that's custom. Awesome. Okay, let's also talk about animating lists. So in our project, we have this list, this unordered list right here that iterates through this array with the help of the V4 directive. Now we can animate this list with the help of transition group and it's very simple. So all we have to do is in our unordered list section, we're gonna wrap this custom component wrapper called transition group and we're gonna give it a name of list and we're gonna add in the same thing that we had here to apply animations to it. So I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna paste it right here except I don't wanna use the same type of animation. We're gonna use one called bounce in up. And then the second one will be called bounce out down. So right here, bounce out down. All right, and then let's close that. And we'll close this transition group. 
Oops, this will be like this. All right. All right, so now let's go ahead and save it and we'll watch the magic happen. So we'll just say coder, enter, there you go. Fun stuff. Now, in a little bit, we will add a little um, a, a delete thing, and that way we can see the opposite effect take place. And maybe you can do try doing it yourself if you wish right now. All right, so for the final section of this crash course, we're gonna talk about a very important topic, which is routing. So Vue 2 offers a Vue router, which is their own, own very simple routing library that we're gonna use to demonstrate how to I uh, switch between two different components in the view and also access uh, queries and URL parameters. All right, so let's go ahead and back in our project. The very thing, first thing we have to do is go to our console or the integrated terminal. I'll just, uh, yeah, go to the integrated terminal right here. And we're going to real quickly, let me drag this up. Wish I could increase the size, but, um, We'll go ahead and add yarn, add and view router. Now, you wouldn't have to do this normally if when you started the project with the view CLI, you chose the manual option and then just check, ticked off uh, or checked off the, the view router option. But because we didn't do that, we're gonna set it up manually and don't worry, it's not that hard. All right, so once that's installed, we're going to create uh, a source router file. So inside of source, We'll create router.js, all right? And we're gonna paste this, and this is all in the written version of this uh, part. So we're importing view, router, skills, and about. So this skills.view, we already have it. About.view does not work, but the rest of this is basically what the CLI generates for the router right here for the rest of this file. So we can see that we have, um, we're exporting our new router called routes in here. It's just an array of objects. Uh, we have a path, name, and then component associated. So this will be um, the path in the URL in order to access the view or the component, uh, the view that's associated with the component right here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create that about component view file right here. So let's do that, about.view. And this will just have a template section for now. So just says this is an about page and then it has a paragraph of lorem ipsum text. Not a big deal. Let's also go back here and save this. And also let's visit our main JS file because we're not done with this setup yet. And we have to import the actual router. And then we also have to specify router and then a comma right there and we're good to go. All right, so now let's go ahead and visit our app.view file. And we're gonna make an adjustment to the template section. All right, so right now we're just showing skills, but we don't want to do that. Instead, we're going to create a navigation. So a nav. Inside of here, we'll have a router hyphen link. And we'll say to, and think of this as href. This is just to the, the root or the home. And then we'll also copy this real quick. And then this one will be forward slash about and about. All right, next, and this next part's very important. Wherever you want uh, the router components to display the templates or the templates, you put in router hyphen view, just like that. Very simple, all right? so. Uh, while we're here in app view, we're going to um, style our nav a little bit and also change up our, our properties. So um, I'm just gonna copy just two rule sets. All right, and then also there's a couple, I didn't wanna center it vertically anymore. So all I'm doing is removing align items. And this is CSS grid stuff, by the way, which is relatively new. And then I'm gonna put just padding hyphen top 50 pixels. All right, so let's go ahead and save this. And we will now see that we have our home and about. And if we click about, we'll see about in the uh, URL board, or board <laughs> in, the, in the URL section. And then also click home, 
there we go. All right, so that's how you set up very basic routing. So you may, in the future, obviously, want to pass and read router parameters up here. So to do that, let's say, for instance, you know, the about we're passing for some reason, some type of URL parameter that denotes a person's name. Uh, it doesn't make sense in the context of the app, but let me just show you how it's done. So let's go back to our router.js file. And right here, for path of about, we're going to put a forward slash, a colon, and name. So this name could be anything like XYZ. That's the name that you're going to use to grab the value uh, in that URL perimeter. So we'll say name, save that. And then we're going to visit our about view file. And we're going to say hello. And through interpolation, we'll say their name. That property doesn't yet exist. We're going to define it momentarily. All right. And then we're going to add a script section to our component. And we have all the same stuff that's usual. In fact, I'm just going to copy some of this stuff right here. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll copy the whole thing just to make my life a little bit easier. All right, so we don't need any methods, so I'm getting rid of this. We'll keep data. We're going to return just one property. And so that's going to be right here. We'll say their name. And it's simply going to be this dot route dot params for parameters and then the name that we gave it in router.js. All right, so let's go ahead and save. And now we go back. If I put in Gary, hello, Gary, Joe, there we go. Very, very simple. All right, great. So that's it for you know the the, the bulk of this course, basically, um, and especially for just handling basic router stuff. I, I did as a final bonus and to, to finish off this crash course, I wanted to add a little um, delete option here, just so it can be a little bit more dynamic. All right. So what we'll do is in our source component skills file, we're going to add in I uh, just in our list item section right here, just after our data.skill, we're going to add in an I class of FA for font awesome. We're going to include font awesome. And this is going to be minus circle. My, my voice is about to go out. I actually have bronchitis. And I recorded all of this in one take. So V on is a directive on what? Click. So when somebody clicks this, we're going to call a method. We're going to pass in the index and tell it which one to remove. And slash I. Ooh, and then under methods, we're going to add one called remove. And we're going to pass in the ID. And we'll say this dot skills dot splice. And then the ID and then one. And that will remove it uh, for us. So next, let's add in font awesome. So we're going to import just as we did with the animate. So this is the URL to the animation um, or the font awesome library rather. Then we'll go ahead and we save this. Oh, and by the way, I believe we're going to have to add some styling to that. But yeah, right click that. Let me style that real quickly. This isn't actually contained in the written version, but I think I can uh, get, a word, get, get away with doing it myself. Just I, as a selector, uh, float right. Should be all we have to do. There we go. All right, so now let's add something real quick. All right, let's get rid of them. Great. You could also change I uh, real quickly, cursor pointer just so it gives us that signifier. Bam. And there we go. All right, guys, hopefully you learned a lot throughout this crash course. I know, um, you know, I didn't want to cover too much all at once. Uh, otherwise, you would get bogged down with way too much information. But hopefully this gave you a really strong starting point from which you can begin to further develop more intermediate to advanced topics within Vue.js. So make sure you check out Corsetra.com. Um, 
I know at this point, I don't have any up yet, but you may be watching this a week or two or a couple months down the road when I have a lot more content based on view, which is what my plan is. So check out the courses, um, the, the very cheap paid courses where I show you how to build full actual apps people might wanna use. Um, and you'll probably find some new content there for Vue.js. All right, so I'm Gary Simon. Make sure you check out my voice is going. Um, Corsetra.com. Make sure to subscribe here uh, on YouTube if you're watching on YouTube, and I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.